Walmart just reported earnings this morning and they kind of crushed it. Now, remember, Walmart had warned a couple of weeks ago about inflation causing a problem for them to be profitable. And here's what they here's what they announced. They grew, first off, comparable store sales, 6.5%. That included 9.5% at Sam's Club. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, this is incredible, but they did talk about inflation driving top line sales, right? So from here, we look at all other things. They had earnings per share of $1.88 adjusted of $1.77. E-commerce up 12%. That's a big jump for e-commerce, 12% jump in the year. I liked what I saw there. So Walmart international sales are $24.4 billion, an increase of 1.3 or 5.7%. And we're seeing a lot of this lately, negatively affected by a billion dollars from currency fluctuations. So obviously selling and buying in different currencies will affect when the prices of currencies go up and down. It'll affect how these companies report their profit and loss. So you've got to remember that as these revenues go up and down, the same as if it was benefited from a currency exchange rate, I wouldn't give that that much credit either way. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the numbers. So Walmart right now is up big, 5.5%, and it's... 10 o'clock on the nose. Here's what they reported. Net income for the quarter rose to $5.15 billion or $1.88 a share from $4.28 billion one year ago. Excluding non-recurring items, adjusted earnings per share of $1.77 beat the consensus of $1.62. Okay. Now, revenue did grow. So revenue went to $152.86 billion above the consensus estimate of $150.99. Now, if you're new to this channel, I'm Paul. I'm a value investor. I like to look at the numbers of a company to determine what I need to do next if I should pay more attention if I should look at the company. I don't believe in looking at the company's qualitative aspects to start. My way of sifting out the BS is to look at the numbers first. Then I look at all the companies that numbers fit and I then go through and decide which companies and what questions to ask to determine which companies to buy. For a company like Walmart, I don't care that much about short-term beating versus not beating analyst expectations. My goal is to look at a company from a long-term perspective, assign a value to it. Part of that is using our stock analyzer tool. And then when the stock hits that price, I start buying it. I don't sit here and worry about quarter to quarter projections. So let's go through Walmart's eight pillar analysis. Now, if you're new to the channel, again, I use eight pillars to use this process. So pillar number one, we want the five-year PE on Walmart to be less than 22.5. So on our main page, as part of our software, they're at 33.47. That's an X. And if you have our software, follow along. It's a good repetitive cycle to keep doing this. Pillar number two, we want the five-year return on invested capital greater than 9%. So we have a check mark here. It's 10.4% here right on our main page. So those are our first two pillars. Now, before we go on to pillar number three, I want to focus on dividend. Their dividend right here is 1.6%. It's higher than the market, but not great. But it pays out $6 billion. So you might be sitting there saying, oh, $6 billion, it's great dividend, I love it. Well, remember, dividends are paid out of free cash flow. So you have to make sure that the company can support that dividend. So in the last year, According to our numbers here, they've made $3 billion in free cash. So they're probably investing a lot in the company. But in the last five years, they've averaged $15 billion. So they can easily afford that $6 billion dividend. So I'm not concerned about that. And I'm quite sure this big drop in free cash flow is a short-term aberration for, for Walmart. So onward, pillar number three, very simple. I just want revenue growth over the last five years. That's it. So I go to their income statement in our software. And at the very top right here, I go to five years ago, 505 billion. Last year, 576. Check mark there. Now see guys, it's only $70 billion increase in the last five years. That's not big growth. And you saw their five-year PE was 33. That seems a little rich to me. If I see a five-year PE of 33, I really want to be seeing very, very big growth levels. A few percentage points a year is not big growth levels, but we'll get into that later. Pillar number four, net income growth. That's all I want. I just want to see, are they more profitable this year than they were five years ago? So I scroll down just a smidge, net income, 9 billion, last year, 13 billion, check mark there. All right, so, so far we have one X, three checks. Pillar number five. Now guys, this is the silent killer investing. This has to do with shares outstanding. I wanna see that shares outstanding are staying the same or going down. So I go to the bottom of our income statement here and I go here to the end of six years ago, 3.04 billion, last year, 2.75, check mark. Now, before we go further, I want you to understand that just because their shares are decreasing doesn't make it a good thing. I don't like how the stock is so expensive on a PE basis and the company keeps buying back shares. And it's not like their dividend is some huge dividend of five or six 
percent where they can save on their dividend by buying back shares. So even though this is a check mark, I get a little apprehensive. I question the reason for buying back shares. Pillar number six, it has to do with long-term debt. Guys, debt works for a company the same way it works for you at home. The more debt you have, the more likely you are to have a financial problem if your income or profit decreases or your revenue decreases. Same thing with a company. So how do we figure it out? We go back to our main page and the metric that I've decided to use, I take our five-year average free cash flow, 15 billion. I multiply it by five. Let's call it $75 billion. I want our long-term liabilities to be under 75 billion. Now keep in mind one thing, Walmart probably has a lot of leases in that long-term liability number. So that's something to keep in mind with retail. If there's a lot of leases, it's not as big a deal and it can really exaggerate their long-term liabilities, but we still use the metric to be consistent. So I go to the balance sheet. I scroll all the way to the bottom. Hey, look at this. 63.75, including their leases. That's a check mark. We want it under 75 billion. That's wonderful. Our final two pillars, pillars seven and eight, have to do with free cash flow. So what is free cash flow? It's cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. It's essentially the lifeblood of the business, in my opinion. It's harder to manipulate the net income. And over long periods of time, your free cash flow and your net income should be very similar. Okay. So we go to our cash flow statement and we scroll a little bit further. And guys, as my way of showing my appreciation for those who watch our channel, I've made the math very easy for you. Cash from operations less your capital expenditures. All right. Now they had a big drop and we see here cash from operations and that's coming from a $12 billion change in working capital. So that's a big reason why their cash from operations changed. But if you look back five years ago, 18.23 last year, 3 billion, that is an X. Our final metric is kind of like our five-year PE. We want to take the five-year average free cash flow, 15.3, multiply it by 22.5, and we want the market cap to be under that number. So 15 times 20 is 300 billion, plus another 30 billion, 330, let's call it $340 billion. We want their market cap under $340 billion. So we go back to the main page here, market cap close, 385. So it is close. Now all this math might've been confusing, but the great news is our software does all the eight pillars for you. So we have three X's. We saw the cash flow growth. We saw the PE and the price of free cash flow were X's. Now, does that mean you'd avoid it? Not necessarily. Again, every investment is the present value of future cash flow. Your job is to make assumptions about the future because we don't know the future. Put in our stock analyzer tool and it'll give you an idea of where you should be. So if this makes sense to you, before we get into stock analyzer, this software here has been a game changer for myself and the thousands and thousands of people who are in this community. What it's used to do is give you a better advantage in terms of analyzing companies. It gives you 30 years of financial data. It gives you all of our pillars. It gives you exclusive content every single day. We post videos just in the community. And the biggest aspect of all of this is this community. Research is hard. Being around like-minded people is difficult. If you're like me, you are probably thinking this way. You are attracted to this kind of thought process, but there weren't many people around you thinking this way. In this community, there are thousands of people every single day talking about their investment ideas. Before I made this video, I was upstairs talking about options with a bunch of our users, having ideas exchanged. I go through, I can see everybody talking and what they're talking about. We do daily quotes. It's a real community of building like-minded people people. This is all, all of this, including all the tools up here, as well as the ones coming are all available for less than a cup of coffee per day. So if this is interesting to you. Go to everythingmoney.com or for our international users, patreon.com. But the biggest thing in all this software is the stock analyzer tool. So this is a comparison of what our software gives versus other people. We do the mobile app. All of this that I mentioned is all available on a mobile app. It notifies you every day. You can chat in there. You have the eight pillars, the 30 years of financial data, the stock analyzer tool, exclusive content, that access to all of us and coming soon, real estate calculators, stock screeners, the retirement calculator is already here. This is all incredible, guys. All of these things are available right here. Our competitors don't give you any of that and they're all more expensive. The bottom line is if this thing can save you one or 2% losses or make you one or 2% a year in gains, this will lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Don't be penny wise and dollar dumb. Go out there and sign up for less than a cup of coffee per day. So now to get back to our stock analyzer tool. So First things first, guys, I want to pick number of years of analysis. I tend to pick 10. You can do one to 20 here. Now, for those who are going to watch this, if this gets confusing, please rewatch it because it's a super important to understand the process of using the stock analyzer tool well. So for revenue growth, guys, Walmart's going to grow with the economy. And as you can see, it's nice and boring, two or 3% a year. So I'm going to stick with two, 3.5 and 5%. So why did I pick 5%? Inflation. 
it is possible that inflation really drives up revenue for a while. So I'm willing to put 5% in the high side. Profit margin. Guys, look at that profit margin. I love it when people criticize Walmart for being this super profitable, high power business. 2.6% profit margin, guys. That's insanely low. So I'm going to go with 2, 2.25, and 2.5. Free cash flow margin. 2.25, 2. Actually, 2.2, 2.6, and 3. Because I'm just looking at these numbers over the last 5 and 10 years and trying to focus on these as opposed to one-year numbers, okay? Now, PE, 30, and I don't worry about this 122 price of free cash flow. This is the PE and price of free cash flow I think the company should be selling at in 10 years. It's a big company, has a great moat, but doesn't have a lot of growth. So I'm going to stick to 13, 14, and 15. And by the way, this is completely subjective. I could see the argument for 14, 15, and 16. I could see that argument completely. But I look at the growth numbers and think to myself, that's kind of what bothers me about it. So I'm going to keep it lower. And finally, guys, my desired return. Guys, I'm going to do 12.5%. Sometimes I do 15. I I go higher based on the risk involved. But Walmart is a very stable company. It's huge. It ain't going away anytime soon. So I'm okay getting a smaller premium to the market of 12.5%. It gives me enough margin of safety for such a large company. I'm hit the analyze button. Now again, guys, we're going to get six numbers below. Low, middle, and high on earnings multiple. Low, middle, and high on on cash flow multiple. If it's all green, it doesn't mean go out and buy. It means go do your research and verify these numbers. You want to do that research? That's what the community's for. Because everybody in there can, I'm sure people in there have talked about Walmart. You can go in there, type in WMT and go directly to a chat that has has nothing to do with Walmart. If it's all red, doesn't mean you ignore it. If it's close, let's say, for example, we're currently at 140. Let's say the highest number is 135. Well, you're pretty close to 140. So go do some more research and get yourself ready and then add it to your watch list. You just hit the clock, the, the plus button, add to the watch list, and you can sit there and you'll get notified by email, on the app, and on the software when the stock hits that price. So scrolling down here. All right, guys. It kind of makes sense. A low price around 50, a high price around 90, middle somewhere in the 60s. And guess what? Based on this PE, that makes sense on 140. It's just math, guys. So if you like this analysis, I ask you to do two things for me. One, subscribe to our channel. And two, watch our next video to understand more about our eight pillar process. Thank you very much for your time.